Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with Jonathan Higgins from the ARW podcast. Did I get that right? You did. Okay. And we're here with Steve Pollard, as always, the salmon of knowledge. This is the second time this intro actually comes to kill a minute ago. Mm. He tried to edit that out, but... Still, it's not, it's not as worse as my Skype call uh, moment earlier, is Yeah, it? we're recording this about 40 minutes later than we should be, because uh, Johnny thought we were talking to him on Skype, yeah. and not in person. I'm sat there at home on the laptop, but uh, look, I'm here now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we're, we're here sure. now. Sure. That's it, well, yeah. this is our final whistle, re- uh, final whistle reaction from the first leg of... Gemma versus Ireland. Um, so yeah, I suppose we will start things off with the lineup yeah. and the tactics. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first seen it, I and I got the the lineup was announced, and I seen o- o- Odell was coming in for Wheel, and I was like, what sort of formation is he playing? And I just couldn't make sense of it on paper. And then obviously we lined up, and we had um, Arthur as the deep line mm-hmm. midfielder, and we had Hendrick and Brady. Yeah. in there and Odell on the right hand side mm-hmm. yeah which didn't make Odell being on the right didn't make a huge amount of sense to me he played most of his football for Ireland on the left hand side when he has played um, and he seems more effective for Bristol City as well he's on the left and on the last couple of weeks he's kind of played in the formation where he's kind of swapped from one side to the other during the game yeah. but he's more suited to the left I think he's a better player going outside people on his left foot than he is coming in on his left, and I don't know, I I got why he was in there, I got why he was in there to kind of be a player who was just going to track back, um, and kind of defend against their fullback and give Christie support and maybe let Christie get forward a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I didn't disagree with the selection of him because on form, he's played well in his last couple of games for Ireland, he's in good form for Bristol City, mm-hmm. so, and it's nice to see someone brought into the team who's in their 20s. At the same time, because you know it's good to see someone like him get experience at this age, at this level, and be given confidence by O'Neill to actually go right. Well, you can be in the team in yeah. such a big game. Johnny, I was shocked. Now we spoke in the previous show about you know we all went, both of us went with Whelan, but we also threw in the caveat that O'Neill does like to throw a little uh, a banner in the world. He does draw, yeah, just to flips the card every now and again. Um, I was genuinely shocked. I did not see Ododa starting a game of that that importance. Um, I was sure he was going to go with Wheeler number six, and you know we can argue the twos and fro- the twos and fro's for it. But uh, yeah, no, I was shocked. Um, and there you are, really. That's O'Neill. It was, it was a bit. It was a bit like that with the Mal- the Maldova game. No one thought he was going to start that game. He mm, for that true, team. but yeah, yeah, true, but um, yeah, no, it was just, it was a very strange one for me. Um. You can we'll we'll talk about it later on if it, if it worked or not. But um, I would have I would have I personally if we started the game again I would have gone with Wheeler. Yeah, the other kind of thing that was up for debate in selection I think was always going to be whether you own Murphy or Long. I think we all assumed he was going to go with Daryl Murphy and he yeah. did. But performance wise, I think the game suited Murphy a lot less than the Wilds game did, um because That's we tried. Right. Because in the Wilds game, when we tried to break forward, we tried to get the ball into Murph a little bit more and into his feet and try and give him a chance at winning headers or controlling the ball and setting up play. Whereas last night, we just seemed to... The game plan seemed to be to try and put the ball behind Denmark, which, yeah, Kerr and Bieland aren't quick players. <coughs> but if we're going to do that, you may as well start Long. Because Long's going to run in behind better than Murph is. Yeah, the yeah. argument as well would be... That he could go with two, but then it is the midfield. Why not? Mm, with er- with Ericsson there as well. No, um, I think the the way the Welsh game, um, that does put Mur- Murphy in the shop window because up until then it had been, I know Long pulled out last minute, um, before the Welsh game. But I think and Murph was always going to start that game. He probably Ireland, was just yeah. after it kind of mulled over, and then definitely the Welsh game was was all. It was never there was never any question in my mind that Murphy was going to start. Yeah. Um. Again, we'll talk about it later, but the, the that Welsh game just kind of. Made O'Neill's mind really. He was gonna go. If he was gonna go for one, it was definitely going to be Mark. Yeah. So like, are we happy with like as well as that Clark captain? That was another shock. Of all the players in that yeah. team, like I don't know whether O'Neill does this just boost players' confidence or think it'll t- turn them into Superman. It seemed to work with David Moyler now. In fairness, <laughs> it did. not that he was ever bad, but you know what I mean. He seemed to raise his he game. Definitely a good grew bit. into the role, didn't he? Yeah. But I think Moyler is more of a. Myler suits being a captain a lot more the type of player he is um, type of kind of attitude he has on the pitch and everything like that he can really influence a game in that way whereas 
Clark for me last night, yes, position was fine, made a few good tackles, couple of good clearances, did his job all right as he always does. But his distribution of the ball is horrific. <laughs> like he panics every time he gets possession, he panics. He doesn't see half the time he doesn't see the easy ball out left to Stephen Ward. He just hoofs it. It has to be hoofed, doesn't it? And there's there is nearly always a pass. When you're in that position and you've regained possession as a team, if you're the left-hand side central defender, if your defensive line is in its shape, the next pass is usually to your left-back. And then Ward can play a more intelligent ball or a different type of ball. If you are going to play it long and over the top, he can whip the ball from a far wider angle and get the ball in behind over a full-back's head. If the ball's coming across a full-back... The fullback can defend it a lot easier than if the ball's coming around the fullback, like a left back can put it around. If you're a left central defender, the ball's gonna float over the top. Yeah. And the defender you're you're then given the option of the central defender and the fullback being able to win that header. Whereas if you're putting it from the outside, you're only given the option to the fullback. And it's just it's the subtle intelligence of just going right, take a touch, play it to Ward, let Ward play the ball if we're gonna play it long. And he just didn't do that. He just kept trying to hoof the ball and just get it away from his feet as quickly as possible. Yeah, like a hawk would say. Oh, um, yeah, no, it, it's it's his first impression. It's just a hoof it. Yeah, um, it, as you said, he just panics. And uh, the the captaincy. Look, let's be honest. The captain really doesn't make a lot of difference, really, in, in this day. Unless it's Seamus. Unless it's Seamus, yeah. Like there is a couple of players that it gets an extra couple of percentage out of it. There's another. There's a couple of Myler players. Everyone. Yeah, Myler. Um, I think Seamus. And he tweets us now too. So he does. Yeah, yeah. he's a top. He's a top lad. Um, Shamey I'm a Dave. Great beard, by the way. Yeah, yeah great beard, great beard. Yeah, <laughs> men in black beard, is it? But um, yeah, no, like Shamey and Myler are a couple of, are two players that kind of you know they get an extra couple of percentage out of their performance. There's other players that kind of struggle with it. Yeah, Clark didn't really do anything for his confidence. Um, he was just Clark again last night. Does it make a lot of difference? No. Uh, is it the biggest end shock in the world? No, but I think I think I think, I think with Avin Duffy beside him. I think he kind of he paints over the cracks a, a little bit in Clark's game. I think. Yeah, well, Clark's a, like Clark has a bit of pace about him. He's not a bad tackler. His positioning defensively is grand, but he's not the strongest in the air and he's not the strongest on the ball. So Duffy kind of makes up for the. That's what I mean. Makes up for everything in the air because he just gravitates towards the football whenever it's in the air. I'd say he walks past parks. <laughs> on like a Sunday morning and just the ball's being flicking, crossed flicking in on a pitch and it comes 50 yards onto Duffy's head like he just in either box he just seems to win all those headers but with Clark we actually have gotten to a point with it where yeah they're an okay partnership and yeah I, think I agree with you as well that Duffy kind of papers over a lot of cracks with Clark but going forwards I think we need to find an alternative to him because if we're going to if we're going to move forward as a team we need if we're going to have Duffy in there Duffy's going to be the big strong player kind of Richard Dunn type model I suppose you need your John O'Shea in there who's a little bit more subtle can pass the ball a little bit he's always calm in possession and that's a Kevin Long it's even a John Egan at Brentford yeah. you know it's these type of players you can't actually play with. yeah but you, you, you'd be wanting uh, John Egan to be playing on a kind of higher level to get, to, to get in there first well, look, look at it. we're talking about a Denmark team who did a pretty good job on us at making sure that we got pretty much nothing in attack. And Andreas Bailand is John Egan's central defensive partner at Brentford. Yeah, well, I'm not so, saying that, but my point being that Clark obviously is playing at a better level than him. But he's not playing. He's been on the bench for the last three weeks at Newcastle. He's been dropped. So I think Benitez has seen the same thing with Clark, where he's not a bad player. I'm not for a minute saying Kieran Clark's not a like not a decent footballer who hasn't done a good job but I don't know obviously I wouldn't drop him for the second leg or anything like that but yeah, you know, I get, I get what but you're saying going forward, looking, at, looking at alternatives yes yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm totally with you on that I just think that you know um, for now I think Long would be the next best thing to, to come in yeah but then um, the same problem that Long's not playing at Burnley Behind Tarkovsky and me, yeah, so but it's a long out season, you know. Yeah. Um. Go on, Johnny. Yeah, no. A shout out as well. Um, Richard Keogh isn't finished by any shape or form as well. I al- I always liked him as a as a player. He's definitely he's a bit more. He's definitely more on the better on the ball than than Clark is. Um, yeah. Uh, Got the clean shave against Germany. <laughs> 
I, d- I just I don't know. No, it's I'm not saying it's a long term option, yeah. but I don't think Clark is I a long term. The last kind of couple of international games he played, he wasn't great. And he also can't the Mexico play. game, he was. Mm, he can't. Pl- he can't play on the left side of the central defense either. He's yeah, always been a right sided mm. one, and I, Duffy covers so much for Christie going forward and stuff as well on the right. That I, you can't take Duffy off the right side, so you need someone who's going to come in and be able to play on the left. And it's not as easy as people kind of make it out because if you watch Richard Kell's performances when he has played on the left side for Ireland against Mexico, he was awful. Yeah, he can't play that side. It just doesn't suit him. Doesn't suit him. He naturally wants to move to one side and he leaves massive gaps in the defense because of it. So it just doesn't work. The only other real left sided central defender we have in our squad, and as much I hate to say it, it's probably Paul McChain. <laughs> no one, let's, let's not and go no there. one wants Starting to say that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, yeah, yeah, no. Let, let, let's not go there, Woodrow Shane. But yeah, look, look, going forward in the short term, it's definitely Clark and, and Duffy. Is it the long term option? No, you, you maybe no. It's still, hard, it's still hard to say. He, he's, he's one of them, Clark, isn't he? He, need, he needs to be concentrating. And yeah, at yeah, international well, level, you can't drop concentration, and he seems to do it a good bit, as we've seen with the Ericsson chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, for me it's just his panic on the ball that's the biggest problem um, and that's going to curtail his career he's going to make that next step on for us um, that's that's the biggest problem it, yeah. really, it really is yeah, so speaking of uh, good performances anyway um, a new god was born last night to uh, <laughs> Irish fans in the terms of Harry Arthur yeah I saw I actually firstly with it, I joking saw of, god, <laughs> I saw a lot of people criticising Arthur for you know his distribution yeah. and his kind of his passing, which yeah it wasn't great, but Arthur was put into the team last night to be what David Myler has been and what Glenn Whelan has been before that as the defensive player and Christian Eriksen didn't have that much of an influence on the game for a yeah. player of such quality and who's had such a good start to the season at Spurs. He uh, he didn't have much of an influence, and that was nearly entirely down to. Just Harry Arthur, he was always there. He was always there. He was there in front of the back four. He kept protecting. He was closing down Ericsson. He was closing down Delaney in midfield. He did a really, really good job. His tackling, his interceptions, his just general work right around the pitch. He was just tenacious for 90 minutes. Or 87 or however long he was on the pitch. And he kind of... It's the first time really... And I even include the game in Wales in it where... You really go right. Well, Harry Arthur has to start now. Harry yeah. Arthur is one of the primary midfielders well. now. The one good. thing good he did do in that game called the let him go. So he, yeah, yeah, no, I thought he was decent against Wales. He was, didn't set the world right, but I, I, um, he did a similar job as he did last night against. Yeah, Wales. no, I thought he. I, I thought, thought he was he, much better last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La, la, last night I thought he was, he, he was exceptional, and it's uh, like to the naked eye for someone that's maybe not sharp in on on the whole football side of things. His intelligence, his intelligence, his run off the wall, the way he covered space. Like I think for me, you look at Ericsson and you look at Ericsson's body behaviour and just watch how pissed off he was. Yeah. That's just all down to Arthur and that's just subtle little things. That what he wasn't if he was smashing into tackles, but he was yeah. just cutting that space off, cutting off the, the runs. I thought like and l- let's be honest, Arthur isn't a natural number six. Yeah, he, ha- he hasn't played there in a that's while. That's why he was surprised when yeah. he went Yeah, yeah, that was one of the one of the shocks as well with the with the team selection. And he hasn't. We, we were talking about. We couldn't even see that happening. Like. Mm, yeah, true, absolutely. Um, but he just he fitted into that uh, position. I think that showed his his game intelligence. The way he was able to just to slot into that into that position in a game of such importance against a quality quality uh, opposition player, and he didn't. He looked completely at home. Uh, yeah. And the only little concern is just the way he he gassed at the end. Um, yeah. And it's a short turnaround, but. Um, but yeah, no, I thought he. I thought yeah, he, he wanted to do the same job. No, he, he won't. Yeah, that's he, the only thing because he, Dave Myler will come back. He will. He will, of course, and it'll. I think it'll allow us to see a different, different side of a side of Arthur again, uh, on Tuesday night. But the thing is, he he, he came out himself and was very uh, critical of himself, mm-hmm. saying that he hasn't been able to to play as well as he can, and he knows that he hasn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he's identified it and he's trying to rectify it now. Yeah. Like fair play to him, absolutely. And yeah. you know, he, he keeps giving in in the like that type of effort that he was given. Like, the Irish fans are gonna like gravitate towards him. It's not like anyone's been calling for him to be dropped because they know he is a very good player, yeah. You know, so it's it's just a matter of if you can keep growing out performances like he has done. But you gotta remember as well, we do play in a team with good midfielders, and, and midfielders are bypassed a lot of the time, so yeah, for them to get the ball down and 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 make themselves look going is hard, yeah. So mm-hmm. 
people forget that you know you have to judge them a lot on their defensive work and their yeah. running work yeah just the donkey team. work yeah just the coverage yeah. just the hard grab but even uh, even yeah. Hendrick he doesn't set the world alight for Ireland but you can see he's a good player he's, he's, a, crack and, he's a crack and fire Bernie yeah. and he does a really good job for Bernie mm-hmm. and he does a good job for Ireland he does yeah Jeff Hendrick is a starter for Ireland regardless of what formation we play or Jeff Hendrick starts because he does whatever job whether it's he put out on the right wing he's put an attacking midfield he's put in defensive midfield you always know you're getting hundred percent from Jeff Hendrick, yeah. and he can do something. He can put a goal out. He's a good tackler. He kind of gives you a little bit of everything, and he's an mm-hmm. important player to have in the team. Two, two important Great players as well. Yeah, two very important players, and uh, um, they haven't been. We haven't used to utilize a lot of their strengths, which is their their passing ability. It kind of get, got got dis- distorted in the game plan, but we are going to have to flip it a little bit so that we will have to use an, a different side of them, which I think they're more than capable of doing that as well. Yeah, but I think we are at our best when we're actually forced to play. I think with with the Aviva rocking, mm-hmm. yeah. it's not a nice place for opposition players to come no, to. No, it won't. And the players, they thrive on it. And a lot of times, the fans suck the ball into the net. Yeah, yeah. I know it's the old cliche, but it's true. And there's there's so many players in, in our team as well that are... The rise to the occasion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or where, the, where, the, where that emotion kind of sucks them in and that brings them to another yeah, level. Clean would probably... There, yeah, is clean, the list. Clean, there is probably no other team in European qualifying, I would say, anyway, that has the ability to pull off a one-off performance like this Ireland team does. And yeah. they've proven it for the last four mm. years, that we can be average for entire qualification campaigns, but time and time again, when the chips have been down and we've needed a win or we've needed a goal, we found it from somewhere. Yeah. Whether it's a Shane Long goal, whether it's a McLean goal, whether it's Duffy, it's... Someone finds a goal, someone finds a performance. It always happens. And that's, we can be as critical of we want as, or as we want of O'Neill. And I'm one of the more critical people you'll find about him. I, I don't really like him, but he does have this ability to bring the best out of this group of players for 90 minutes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if he'd have done that last night, maybe we'd have had a lesser performance on Tuesday and all of a sudden we're in trouble. But he went, he had a game plan, he set us out, he went, right, let's go. If we nick a goal, we nick a goal, but we don't concede. Don't concede, get out of here nil all, we go back to the Aviva and we know we've got a performance in us. Yeah. And that's, I think, to an extent, I think Denmark may have blown their load last night. Denmark played very well. They played very well, they played their game plan, they played the way they want to play for 90 minutes and they didn't break us down. I think people will underestimate how much of a, you know... Not to their confidence that'll be they created chances. <coughs> they had so much of the ball, they had so much territory, everything. They dominated the entire game from a possession standpoint. They created all the chances bar one or two. And they didn't score. Yeah. They had four strikers talk, on the pitch when they we, left. We talked about the chances anyway. Obviously, um the big one was uh Randolph's double save. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other the other one was Sisto's miss. Yeah, the 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 they're the most clear cut. The, they are they are indeed on the like the, the double save. Uh, you know it's a it's a move down the left wing. I think it's Larson's involved and then it comes across to him. Randolph makes a decent save, but he parries it straight out, which he shouldn't have. It had. was a great touch by the by Larson. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. A, it was a nice move to be fair, and it was the first time because they had a lot of possession. Up to, behind, yeah, yeah, they had a lot of possession, and they had been. Do you know how many balls are they pinged behind Christie behind Ward, just trying to get him in behind their foot? Well, they tried to target Christie last mm-hmm. night as well with Cornelius mm-hmm. playing out on the left. Mm-hmm. He was usually a striker, <coughs> and they played him wide left, and they tried to play a lot of diagonal balls towards him. And even Jorgensen was drifting to the left and they were really trying to target Christie. But as he's done time and time again in this campaign, Shane Duffy just took a step to the right and just kept winning headers. Christie was covering in behind whenever Duffy didn't win the header and they got a flick on. Yeah. So yeah, the ball in behind was good and it, you, you have to allow for that in any football match. That you're playing against a good team and no matter how well you defend, at some point in the game they're going to create chances like that. And they did, but Randolph made the save. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. The first one's questionable. Yeah. The second one's second, brilliant. The second one to get very, back up yeah. and make that yeah. second save. And the way he gets up and just catches the ball straight away, yeah. all, all of the movement was was excellent. I know it's straight at him. I think it was a bit overrated because it was straight at him. Perhaps, say, don't perhaps wrong, but, but yeah, but the fact that he's down on the ground getting up to it, I think you have to give him credit on that Every, in, that in that occasion. I think any goalkeeping coach you'd speak to, or ex-goalkeeper who played at a high level or whatever, will tell you that second save is outstanding because of how quick he got up and the position he took. Yeah. He actually got up and got himself in a position 
that the player was striking the ball to the other side of the net to where Randolph was lying. But by the time he hit that ball, Randolph was already up and there to catch it. And that's just the reflexes yeah, of the quickness no, it, of it. It was pure, just as you said, instinct in there. Now, you you can definitely argue that the, the finish could have been a hell, yeah, of a, a, a hell of a lot better. But, you know, I think he deserves some credit. For, he definitely had a little fluff with the, with the parry, but he, he definitely deserves some credit for that. Because a goal at that stage, and it's a completely completely different occasion. They could have got two or three. Yeah. Um, it was an important moment. The The next one, the next big one they had... Again, it was from the the left. Le- the left the left side again. Yeah. Um, that was a bad miss, and we we, we were lucky there. We were really. I thought lucky. it was in. Yeah. So yeah. did I. Really were lucky. Um, again, I, I go. And Seastock doesn't miss them a lot. No, he's like he scored sorry, some goals yeah. for Celta in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and he doesn't miss that a lot. I was sure. I was sure I was in. I won't yeah. lie. I, I was sure I was about to curse at the television, <laughs> but <laughs> but there you are. Like we we. You can you can argue maybe we wrote our look a little bit, in, yeah, particularly in those, in those occasions. But you know, but we we you, you need that type of look. Oh, you do in these type of games and that type of a performance, that type of game plan. You do rely on certain elements of. Yeah. We, of we we we've had our bad share at Cam as well. I mean, look at it, the Duffy goal that was disallowed against Austria. Coleman's break, uh, breaking his leg. We've had some bad things go against us. <laughs> it's a very time some luck came on our side. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and then what is it? The next big chance is, is a chance of our own, really, just before yeah. half time, where Christie puts on the, literally just goes an old fashioned, boot the ball ahead and sprint on yeah. and get it. And he, he's almost run so fast that he's ran past the whole team. I'm there. Is there anybody to pull this back to? And you, there was. They kind of <laughs> was. There was perhaps to. to I, got, I, I look. You get into yeah. that position, you're well entitled to, yeah. to have a go. I yeah, you are, but I think the difference is if Seamus Coleman gets into that position, that ball goes across the box and it goes to McLean and McLean taps it in at the back post. You make it sound so simple. Mm. But the pass was there. The pass was there and when you have a player Seamus Coleman is that level above Christie. I don't doubt that. Intelligent wise yeah. intelligent wise especially in those positions, Coleman would have squared that. You've yeah. seen him do it forever and where he gets down the wing, he beats two players. And the shot might be on, but they'll square it back to someone or play it back to someone. The ball in for Hulin. Yeah, mm, true. Yeah, no, th- it was it was weird. The first time I watched it, I'm screaming at him. He has to pull a pass to pull it back. Watch the replays. I'm kind of you know I can see why he took the shot. It was weird the way he, I see and what he was trying to do. Like, him for having the shot. The, the way he, he did it though was there, weird. Mm. It was like some like outside the foot, but it wasn't. It's a little little dink, and like, it's a decent save from Schmeichel. To be fair, he keeps himself. Up like we we spoke about you know out of the goalkeeper manual there yeah um for for Randolph he definitely Casper definitely did it because he stood up big it was a decent little flick it could have very of his dad there is yeah. no there is no goalkeeper you leave like like to less have that opportunity against than a Schmeichel it's whether it be Peter <laughs> or Casper it's that big they frame, make themselves it? look like about four people in that goal when they come on yeah. like when you're bearing boys, down on them they're just so big and they make themselves look so big they're like a starfish. And it's just, it's so difficult to score past one of them. Well, obviously, as the game um, went on, I think a lot of people were looking to get Shane Long on yeah. to mm-hmm. stretch their defence. And he came on then around the 70, I think it was around the 75th minute. Yeah, yeah at that stage, um, Murphy's gassed. Um, I know he's. It was the right thing to do. It was definitely the right thing to do. Um, Murphy, to be fair to him, I know you can definitely say he was hindered by our game plan. Our game plan, or our lack of, um, that bit of quality on the ball, or that bit a little bit of ambition really on the ball. Um, but I thought he had a very poor game. Yeah. Um, I thought he was, I and I would even go say I thought he was extremely poor in the fact that he he offered nothing as a as a, as an outlet for holding up the ball. The ball that was coming up to him, yes, he's outnumbered, but I want my striker in that position to be able to just put his arse in front of the ball, just to shield it. Uh, and just hold the ball up, make it free, uh, just pass the ball out to the to the uh, on rushing midfielders. And I thought he didn't do that at all. I thought he was poor in the air. He he rarely won any headers. Um, the ball didn't stick with him. Um, and he he wasn't able to give an option then to run in behind. I know that's not his, that's not his game. But he wasn't able to do it. Where Long I thought was more effective in the fifteen minutes or so that he was on than Murphy was all game. And I'll go as far as saying it. I know we'll talk about the team later on, but if. If we were playing a one, uh, Tuesday night it has to be long up front. I thought Murphy was that poor, I really did. Now I don't like I don't like dishing players, but I thought we could have, we could have added a, a hell of a lot. We could have made a good result, a great result if we had a striker that was able to hold the ball up there. Yeah, um, I think in any regular circumstance, I would also agree like that. That long should definitely play and everything like that. But 
came on, he had flashes where mm-hmm. he's really good, he won a couple of free kicks, he ran at that, but like, he, that get, he gets in front of goal or he gets into a difficult position and he just can't do anything. He just goes to pieces and you see it in his face. Just goes to pieces. That kid needs a goal to go in off his arse. Mm-hmm. You know, better time to do it than choosing us. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying Long is a superstar. He's not. Yeah, he's a limited yeah, player. But, he, but he's he, a different he's type of option. Yeah. He's, he's yeah, stretched exactly. them more. Yeah. And against that, I, I don't think that, that, that back uh, defence for Denmark is great. And I think it definitely, as we spoke earlier, if you run at them... you know, and Simon, Simon Kyer can be got at absolutely. by someone who runs behind him who, or who runs at him. Throughout his career, it's the reason he's never moved up to the very top level because he's good in the air... Position wise, he's quite good, but he's slow. Yes. He's slow and he's vulnerable when someone puts the ball behind him. He's not good at defending, and he never has been. Bieland is an okay central defender, but he's not great. It's if I was Danish, it would baffle me as to why Andres Christensen doesn't play for them ahead of a defender who plays for Brentford. But that's what they've gone with, and that's what we need to exploit. We need to exploit it in the fact that either Long plays or if Murphy does play. McLean, I would think it'll probably be McLean and Brady will be the other two of a front three, mm-hmm. and they need to get closer. They need to get tighter, and they need to get. And they closer. definitely need to get get behind them. Yeah, get see behind. how much we miss Walters though. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, would have been yeah. Because what Walters is is a bit of a hybrid between uh, Murphy uh, and Long. He has a bit of both. Exactly. You know, he has that hole of play. He has a little more, bit more pace with him. He's John like, Walters reminds me of a peak Tim Cahill in a lot of ways. Where he's right. just a bastard Cattle. to play against when he's up front. He punched that corner flag. Yeah, he's just awful to play against. He was a little prick. Because though. you just. <laughs> he doesn't give you a second. Long doesn't give you a second, but John Walters doesn't give you, give you a second, and you're also worried at every point that you're just going to punch you in the back of the head. <laughs> because he's just a brute. He's just strong as an ox. Yeah. And he has a bit of pace, and he's got a bit of quality. I think Walters is a much bigger miss than anyone really realises. Because yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think to be honest, last night and it might be a big call. I think we would have won that game one 0 with Walters there yeah. last night. And Walters also, I think he would have got him behind. Yeah. He would have created something. And he also allows you to play a five in midfield and, and just hang on the right, but give that option then both an aerial threat and a, a like a threat in behind. Yeah. Like he would have played say for argument's sake instead of without it. Yeah. On yeah. The, on that ring, he would have been able to do the same sort of dist- defensive. So uh, look what work. he did against Germany. Like mm-hmm. He held yeah. the whole German team. He did at that corner yeah. flag yeah. there. It was the biggest roar I've ever heard in my life for a corner. Yeah. But um, yeah, he gives you that option. He gives you that outlet. Um, but even but against Austria. The goal against yeah. Austria. Yeah, it was a battery, man. But that's what I'm saying. We had him against Kiara uh, and Bjelland uh, there. Yeah. You know, battering man against them. Because Murphy wasn't really doing it compared to what he was doing against Wales. I think maybe the occasion might have got to him a bit more. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Maybe, and I just don't think Merv's decent and I like him, but... I don't think anyone's uh, expecting him to, to, to set the well. I think everyone just wants him up there to make the ball stick. He's and a bit Johnny of a journey. He didn't make the ball stick, so... He's just a bit of a journeyman championship striker, and this is a little bit of a level too much for him, but we don't have another option, mm. so we're kind of stuck with Merv, who's maybe not up to this level, and Shane Long, who has just zero confidence yeah. in his abilities anymore. He mm. just seems... A broken man. Well, the the good thing is is that none of the players got yellow cards, so everyone's yeah. available. And Moyna's back in you now too. Yeah. I I assume he'd be back in and be captain again. Yeah, oh, well, I, you'd have to be have to be. Yeah. I think you can move on to kind of talking about that as well. Like it's to what we go with on Tuesday a little bit. I know we'll have a preview of it, but if we're talking about it. Obviously, we talked about Murphy and Long, and um, which one of them starts. But I think the first one is Odell will probably come out and Myla will come in. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's important to that'll push Brady out on the right. It'll push Brady out onto the right, but I think more importantly it'll push Hendrick further forward. And it'll give Hendrick a little yeah. bit more freedom. I think, I think that's yeah. important. Yeah, and the big the biggest thing for me is it'll allow Hendrick and Arthur to play another five yards forward up the pitch because yeah. Myler is going to be that presence in front of the back four. Um, he's going to be a, a better outlet on the ball as well, and it'll allow our you know our ball playing midfielders just to push a little higher, which is a little little higher as well to uh, closer to our, our main striker as well, yeah. and it just allows those runs in behind. Right. So, what would you say our main changes would, would need to be for the next game? Um, I think my I think my like coming back in um yeah, is essential. I think, that, I think that's uh, yeah yeah. Given, and then the other one is uh, yeah, I would probably start Chang Long. Yeah. Um, yeah. for the pure, there is. 
I think two glaring weaknesses in that Denmark team from last night when you watch it. The first one is the two fullbacks don't want to come backwards. They want to go forward. They want to get crossed in the box. They want to get behind our fullbacks. They don't want to come back. They have no interest in coming back. We a couple of times. They're very open. They're very far up the pitch. So McLean and Brady need to get further up the pitch. They need to push them back. They need, they need to, need to destroy their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Long will also make them question that more because he'll run the channels more. He'll run in behind more. And there's so much space in behind them two fullbacks. If we can get balls in behind them fullbacks, they're very open. And the other one is, I think Hendrick could have an absolute failed day against Kvist. Kvist is slow. He's laboured. He doesn't look like he wants to chase stuff when we run at them. A couple of times Brady ran at him in the second half and he just beat him. Kvist was just nowhere near him. He didn't want anything to deal with him. Someone runs at him, he just seems to go, no, you're all right, I don't want to tackle you. He's yeah. grand to pass the ball 20 yards and mm-hmm. retain possession and make a few interceptions, but if you run at him, he looks very weak, and Cardiff fans will tell you that from when he was at them, that that was the biggest weakness in his game, is people just ran at him and ran at him, and he had no answer for it. Yeah, but I think as well, he's like, you know, a lot of people are going, oh, you know, we didn't score and all that, but look, we're one game away from from the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, and a game in Dublin. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Imagine the scenes on Tuesday. Yeah. We have qualified for a World Cup. I think you, I think people actually forget that we're that close. If you'd have offered we, we this be to as any as Ireland yeah. fan before it, we probably would have taken it. Oh, of course, you I thought the Serbia game. You said that soon. They yeah. go, you're mad. Yeah, mm. most definitely. Yeah, no, no I, I had a tweet out at the time that because there, there was a little bit of negativity and that that was more down to I think people were frustrated with the, with the game and the way it gone but, but you got to remember that was the game plan yeah. whether you, you can argue about the yeah, but I think he's learned from the Serbia game which is good yeah absolutely I think he got a bit too brave there and he tried to be a bit, a bit too gung-ho and a bit more yeah. I think he thought we were better than what we were really I think he got he got fed into the motion but the game plan whether you argue whether it was right or wrong it worked we got the draw. He wanted a nil nil, or he def- he wanted to get a result back to Dublin Tuesday yeah. night, and he, he wanted just didn't to want to. Yeah, no, lose there was no, again. there was no way we were we were taking any chances there. Even at the end, we were never going to push it. We could have pushed on. We could have got the goal, but he had no interest in yeah. it. Could have so brought on a hill line. Could have brought abs- on absolutely. There was a load. There was a load. There was a load. There was a load of options he, he could have done to to try and go for that. He simply didn't. So he's taken the approach as one game in Dublin, yeah, to get through to the World Cup, as you said. That is a massive, massive opportunity and this team is more than capable of doing it w- with a couple of subtle changes with and both in in personnel yeah. and in the, the game plan and I think we're more than capable of doing it and what's important I think, I think as well, well with sorry, go on, no you go on I think halfway through the, through the game you'll see us change our play Depend, yes depending on goal scorer That's oh definitely yeah because he's a very reactionary manager yeah. uh, O'Neill is um we we probably will set up start the game something similar. I don't see us to going to going home. Maybe you guys might disagree. I think I know, that's at least the yeah. second half. Yeah, I di- I actually disagree in the sense that I think he'll come out and in the first fifteen twenty minutes he'll want to go out and make a statement. He'll want to go out and go with Denmark a little bit and maybe then. Well, I we hope drop, so. We really drop really a bit deeper, good. but if we go with Denmark in the first ten fifteen minutes, the crowd is just going to get up. It's going to get up. It's going to get louder. Mm. Everything's going to give everyone that belief. We create a couple of chances in the first 15 minutes. The crowd are going to get up and it's going to be that atmosphere. And that atmosphere can carry players through for a game. But tactically, I think the biggest thing, especially if long starts, is the best long passer in our squad is David Moyle. Mm-hmm. And if Moyle can get time on a ball deep, as I said before with those two fullbacks, Moyle are to eat that up all day. the Irish pair off. <laughs> eat it up all day, just playing them long balls in behind. And even if they don't work every time, every single time, he's going to ask the question to Kayer, he's going to ask the question to B. Allen to get wide, to cover long, to you know, get rid of that ball. But I think he will. I think he'll know. I think that he did enough to warrant. Yeah, he has to. Yeah, I think he'll know now that we have to go for it a little bit more. And when we go for it a little bit more, that long is probably the right player for it. Yeah, yeah well, uh, I think we we'll leave it there then, I, I suppose. Yeah. It's a good chat, I suppose. Um, Get everyone up for the game a little Absolutely, bit more. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, uh, like, but we should be optimistic. Like we yeah. have one game. It's oh, huge. This is this is this is huge. This could change a lot of people's summer plans next year. I've already booked it off from work. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, we haven't even qualified yet. I already booked. It oh, off. by the way, if you're, if you're going to be looking for flights, go on incognito mode. 
Yeah. And delete your cookies. Yeah. Fucking hell. People stop looking for flights to Moscow <laughs> on a on a public browser. Ryan I just up the flights every time. Yeah. <laughs> Use your head. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think we'll we'll leave it there. Please, guys, uh, if any of you guys want to come in on the couch and have a chat with us about Ireland or whatever else, um, please do get in touch with us. Also, we're aiming for one thousand subscribers at the moment. We're at, uh, over that seven hundred mark now, so uh, we're aiming for one thousand subscribers before Christmas. Yeah. So uh, if you tell your friends, um, create fake accounts. Yeah, do anything at all. Whatever, just more subscribers. Yeah. If you know. create twenty fake accounts, we'll we'll give you something. That's another. What? Yeah. That's at least a goal, isn't it? Tuesday yeah. night. Yeah. 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 But McLean will score. Yeah. If you, you create twenty five. There's a man that loves a couple, 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 will score, a couple yeah. of fake accounts. Doesn't um, <laughs> at the at the end of the video, there'll be a, there'll be a little bubble that'll pop up, say around uh, above Eric? Steve's head, probably. <laughs> and um, it's above the scummer <laughs> shit. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll be there. Yeah. But uh, just click it, click subscribe, it. and uh, if you want to get notified, click the bell and get notified for every video. Um, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Come on, you boys in green.